I'm going to be going over a few things here uh, before we actually jump into the practical stuff, just for us to start. I think I'm going to go ahead and start with those ones. So everyone, uh, thank you all for joining here tonight, guys. I promise I'm not going to be very extensive uh, on tonight's training. As mentioned before, uh, this is part of a program that we want to see running on SKL more. So if you are here and you are a Swarm Lord or above, or, if, or even if you are a Brood Lord, think about you know picking up the torch for this kinds of training because we could definitely use more of these. Uh, they would make SKL into a much, much sharper tool out there in the field. So I would very much appreciate to see more people doing this kinds of training in the future. Uh, this is part of a program uh, that we are running right now. It's three days of training. Uh, so today we are going to be covering infantry play. Tomorrow it's going to be vehicle play. And the last day will be map training, strategy training, uh, more of the macro stuff on the map. So everyone, for starting today, uh, I just wanted to remind you all about the importance of public leading in Planetside 2, uh, the importance of, you know, getting out there and herding the cats. And I've been dabbling in the numbers a little bit more recently, uh, just because SKL has been running multiple platoons a few times. I've got a, a bit deep into it. So just to give you guys, uh, you know, some idea of what we have out there, as you all know, SKL is the largest outfit across all servers, and we usually run two full platoons. So if we have two full platoons, that means we have 100 people that are being cohesive inside of our platoons. The thing is, inside SKL itself, in most prime time nights, we have over 150 people. It, we don't have only 100 guys, so that means we have one entire platoon of SKL that are not in one of our platoons. We, we could probably run with a good amount of room three platoons during prime time nights very comfortably and we still are not at that point. So once again guys this is another heads up for you to try to consider picking up the torch of leadership out there. Uh, we really need more leaders out there in the field to make sure our forces are cohesive and that's how you win the end game in Planet Side 2. The only end game that we have that is the alerts is by being a cohesive force. Uh, VS has the most cohesive force out of the three factions out there, but we are still a very, very far away from getting 100% cohesiveness. If we have two running platoons and let's say we have 100, uh, 100 more people out there that are being cohesive, that still leaves 100 to 150 people that are not in a cohesive force. Those could be new players, people checking the game for the first time, or maybe even fellow legionnaires that are not finding a spot for them to join one of our platoons. For those of you here that are not currently squad leads or platoon leads, you guys that are not brood lords, I'd say to consider it, guys, it is very, very nice when you are out there leading the forces. It's very rewarding. You are, you know, a more impactful player than any one player can be if you are out there leading the forces. And if you do eventually come to that, uh, if you do eventually come to that, you you will have all the resources necessary inside of SKL for you to pick it up. Like we have the documentation, we have the training sessions, we have everything you need. So, hope you guys consider it. Uh, so, to clarify what we're going to be going over here tonight, guys, uh, I'm going to give you guys just... Uh, a quick rundown of the topics that we're going to be covering. Tonight is platoon infantry training. Uh, we are going to divide the training session into two parts. Those will be firstly breach and secondly hold. So the first part will cover how do you go about breaching a point that's being entrenched by the enemy. And we're going to cover standard breaches, and we're also going to be talking about max crashes. We're going to go over the basics for both of those, and then we're also going to be covering some more advanced stuff. For those of you that might be running inside one of those things when they do eventually happen, uh, so that you know how to make a, 
larger impact into one of those uh, tactics. The last part will be about point hold. This is also a very important key feature in Planetside on how to properly defend a point against enemy breaches. And those are the only two points we're going to be focusing on tonight. After we are done with those two points, I will be going over a few specialized stuff covering more specific bases and uh, we can have a more time for conversation. You guys can make any questions you want after I finish each of the topics. Uh, and we're going to cover those. If anyone has any other specific environment that you guys would like to talk about in tonight's training, we can go over those uh, by the end of the training session. So if you guys have any questions about each, uh, each or one specific base or a specific scenario that you guys may uh, have a curiosity about, make sure you guys are thinking about it now to bring it up by the end of the Good. Okay, then everyone, we are going to get started. Uh, this is all I had to say to you guys here while we are still on the VR training. So we can start going ahead and redeploying, guys. I will be moving you guys over as if you were my platoon, and tonight's training will be working as an example-based training. So I'm going to be using you guys as the platoon. You guys are going to be following around just as if we were in an actual platoon. So we're going to be redeploying over to the off continent here. We're going to be going over to Esimir. So everyone redeploy, hit your U, go to the Esimir warp gate. We're going to be starting from there and we're going to be going to one of the bases there on uh, Esimir for you to use as an example for training. Okay, now everyone, let's start making our way here. I see lots of us in the warp gates already. Let's get some galaxies up. Let's start loading up. We are going to be dropping probably outside of the lattice. Uh, I want to go to uh, more of a standardized base, and those two that we have are not so good for us to use as examples here. So we are going to be going to Platoon Waypoint. Let's get everyone into galaxies. Once we make our way there, we will get a sunder up for us, for us to use as a, as a terminal. Uh, so get everyone inside. Let's start moving. Once we make our way over there, we can use beacons. I believe we can use beacons to redeploy even to uh, deactivate the lattices. So we can make our way there with beacons. So let's start moving out, guys. We have mostly everyone in here. You guys can redeploy inside the galaxies. Redeploy into the galaxies as we make our way. Let's all drop in there, guys. And then we are going to be regrouping close to the spawn room on that area right there. So, everyone, I want you all to regroup on the spawn room. Let's get a Sunder in there for us to change a few classes. And then we're going to start with the first topic, that's Point Breach. Guys, let's try to keep the galaxies and the aircraft outside of the base. Make sure they are not, uh, you know, they're not in any pathway in there. Uh, we, we should try to have a clear base here for us to use as an example. Let's get everyone to regroup here with me on platoon waypoints. So let's regroup here on the spawn room, guys. Let's get you all in there. Oh, restricted area. Okay. Yeah, we might we might just redeploy to one of our bases instead. Then let's go ahead and do that. It's going to be much easier for you to use. So everyone, let's just go to the rink. That's going to be an easier time. Get back into the galaxies if you guys want, or you can just redeploy straight into the base. That's going to be an easier time. Let's get you all in here, and you guys can wait here in the spawn room for us to start with the first topic of the night. I'm just going to get another shout out in the outfit voice for anyone that might be joining because uh, they can still catch the practical part. Hey SKL Be Legionnaires, this is your final Be warning. If anyone needs the it. Tonight's platoon training session is already going on. You still have time to join. 
Uh, everyone is welcome to join. Tonight we are going over uh, free play. So if you would like to join, a mass invite is coming out for you guys. You can type X in outfit chat if you also would like to join. We are currently on Esamir. You can come join us on the rink if you want. Mass invites are coming out. Looks like we had a few more people out there that might want to join. Here, Hitter, I'm going to give you Delta Squad. Yep, looks like we might even get a full platoon here at some point. Okay, so guys, everyone, tonight we are going to be starting with uh, Standard Breach. So I'm going to teach you guys firstly how to breach a point as a platoon okay, leader, you what you should do. And as a player, it's going to be nice for you to also know exactly what to do in these situations. A breach is very self-explanatory, as you guys can expect. It basically means a cohesive attack of a point that's being entrenched by the enemy. And there are two ways for you to deal with those. Uh, one of them is the max crash, and the other one is the standard breach. We are going to be doing a standard breach first. So I'm going to be going step by step on what you should do as a platoon leader if you are facing one of those situations. And to start off, a breach is all about cohesion. So you as the platoon leader, you should start by judging the cohesion on your platoon and seeing if you think your platoon can react to a breach uh, to the effectiveness you will need. If a point is being entrenched and they have overcrop and your platoon is not as cohesive as it could be, it might be uh, you know, a fruitless endeavor for you to try for a breach, uh, but if you think your platoon has enough players with cohesion, you can go ahead and start by asking them to regroup in the spawn room. And the first thing you deal with is platoon uh, is the classes on your platoon. So basically your platoon composition. So for a standard breach, guys, the key class that you're going to want for uh, a standard breach are the medics. So main class is medics, guys. Most of you should be getting medics right now. Make sure every single one of you are switching to a medic. Uh, the other classes that we need for a standard breach are heavy assaults, especially if you're on your heavy assault. Yep, especially if on your heavy assault you have concussion grenades. And you can also use one or two infiltrators with EMP grenades. So if you guys like to play infiltrator, every time we call for a breach, you can play your infiltrator, but we want the infiltrators specifically for the EMP grenades. Now, if you guys are going to be playing either heavy assault or infiltrator with the EMP grenades and the concussion grenades, you need to be confident on your ability to f to hit those grenades because a concussion grenade on your own platoon during a breach can you know screw the entire breach for you so if you are going ahead and pulling those grenades make sure you are going to try to hit them because you can screw you yourself over very very much if you miss those grenades so here we have our squad composition now for the platoon leader you gave the call. Everybody, let's regroup in the spawn room. I want medics with revive grenades. I want uh, heavy assaults with concussion grenades. And I want one or two infiltrators with EMP grenades. While you, give, while you are out giving that call, and this is specifically for the platoon leader and for the squad leader, while your platoon is preparing, you should go outside and make sure you are identifying your route of approach. Like, you should see where you are going to be attacking your enemy from. Everyone, you guys can come outside. And for this part, I would recommend you guys to run either an ambusher jet light assault or just run an infiltrator. And basically, your job while your platoon is regrouping is to go ahead and scout the enemy defenses and try to find the best route of approach for your platoon. And that can either be through the teleporter, so if you all go back to the spawn room, you, as the platoon leader, while the platoon is regrouping, you can take the teleporter and go through the doors like you don't care if you die. Just go outside and try to find the, you know, the point of less resistance on the enemy hold for you to take your platoon through that point. Usually, and as a general rule of thumb, 
taking the generators is the best route you can take because the enemies tend to camp the spawn room more than they camp the, the teleporters. So as a general rule of thumb, go ahead and take the teleporters first, see if there are a lot of enemies on it, and use that time to identify the best route of approach. Uh, after you have that, you will give a time frame for your platoon. So as the platoon leader, you will go ahead and say, everyone, we are moving out on in 30 seconds, or you will use the cap timer as your, uh, as your time set. So you can go ahead and say, everyone, we are moving out at 1 minute 30 seconds on the time cap. Or you can also use the alert timer if you are coordinating with another platoon. So if you are talking to another platoon on command chat, you can use the alert timer to let them know where, when you are going. So you can say, hey everyone, we are crashing the point at 1 hour 10 minutes in the alert timer or anything like that. And the other platoon will know when to run with you guys. Now everybody fall back to the spawn room, for ba fall back to the spawn room. You all have your classes set up. You, as the platoon leader, you can tell that your platoon is ready for the breach. Everyone is here in the spawn room. Everyone is ready. You have identified your best route of approach. You have scouted ahead with either an infiltrator. Uh, you can use the motion detection darts for you to see the spread of the enemy population on the point. And you have identified your route of approach. Now you go ahead and start moving out. So in this case, everyone, we are taking the teleporter, we're taking the teleporter, regroup in the teleporter room, regroup in the teleporter room. Everyone, you are following the platoon leader, you are following the platoon leader, we're moving out in 10 seconds, everybody make your way here. We're going out in 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, go, 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 everybody follow the PL, everyone after the gold star, everyone after the gold star, stay together, revive people as they die. We are regrouping on the door. We are regrouping on the door. Do not go in. Everybody stay here. Everybody stay here. Stay on the door. Now, guys, this is a critical point right here. So step by step, step by step, it goes regroup, move out, regroup, breach. So remember that, guys. Regroup, move out, regroup, breach. This here, guys, is not something you guys are going to be doing. If you are playing, do not put down... Uh, do not put down one of these walls in here because you're going to be wanting to breach as quickly as you can. Now, if you are dealing with a timer that's going against you, if you have 10 seconds or you have 30 seconds left on the timer, you might not have time to regroup here. And you are only going to do this on the situations where you think your platoon is cohesive enough for you to do this kind of stuff. So basically, before you breach, you're going to be grenade spamming the point. So this is where the heavy assaults and the infiltrators will be using their grenades. And we're going to use this as a training session for you guys as well to try to hit your grenades. So before you go, five seconds, all heavy assaults or all snipers, go ahead and throw your grenades. Go ahead and throw your grenades. Grenades in, grenades in, grenades in. Everybody, we are breaching in five four three two one go 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 everybody in everybody in go 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 let me heal you so basically you grenade spam before you get into the point you use the EMP grenades on the tur on the turrets you throw your smoke grenades and your concussion grenades I recommend that every single platoon leader run a smoke grenade on their loadouts and you are going to be the one throwing smoke every time you are breaching it is very effective C4 Yep, we have an enemy in here, guys. Go ahead and kill them. There's going to be very few NC here in this base. Let's make sure we're dispatching out of them. So there you have it, guys. That was a standard point breach. Uh, you can go ahead and switch and change each one of those steps on the point breach accordingly. If you guys are dealing with a situation where you have no time left in the timer, you basically just need to regroup and throw your entire platoon into the point. Now, the key feature of a standard point breach, everyone, is basically to overwhelm your opponent with resources. In this case, you are using revive grenades to leapfrog yourself all the way to the point. If they have a very, very nice entrenched position uh, up on the point that you're trying to breach, you will basically just 
have more revive grenades than they do. It's all about that. Uh, you you are closer to your respawn point. You are bleeding them dry out of revive grenades. So the key point is Landing to have more than they do. Yep, let's go ahead and dispatch with that. Uh, if we can, and then we're going to fall back to the room and do the same thing. Uh, but this time around, we're going to do it for a max crash. So you guys know how to properly prepare for one. So everyone, you can dispatch with that if you want. Uh, well, let's fall back to the spawn room here. We're going to be doing the max crash second now. Let's fall back, let's fall back, get everyone back in the spawn room. Now, as a description, guys, a max crash... Uh, is a very similar tactic to a standard breach. Uh, you are going to be using the same step by step. So you're going to be regrouping your platoon in the spawn room. You're going to be making sure they have the necessary classes. You're going to be moving out through your uh, previously scouted out route. And then you're going to be breaching the point with the maxes. They have the most impact out of the two so a max crash is far more powerful than a standard breach but they also have a few disadvantages to a standard breach that i'm going to be talking to you guys here in a few seconds so to start it goes the same way uh, a platoon composition so a standard platoon composition for a max crash should be mostly focused around maxis with a few engineers and a few medics as a buffer. Now, you don't necessarily need one engineer per max. Your, uh, your idea here is not to keep the maxes alive. You are merely using them as a meat shield for you to push the point. So, you do not necessarily need a balance between maxes and max uh, engineers. You just need a lot of maxes, right? So, a few things while doing a uh, max crash that you should keep an eye out for is a max suit has a slower movement speed than the standard infantry class. So, every time you are moving outside the spawn room, you need to make sure you are telling your platoon to leave the maxes on the front. Because most of the times, the infantry will overtake the maxes. And you want the maxes coming in first. They're going to be the meat shield uh, for the entrenched position. So you should also be telling your platoon to let the maxes go first and keep the medics behind. So medics stay behind. Now guys, we're going to do the same thing here once again. Everybody, we are moving through the teleporter. Regroup on teleporter room. Regroup on teleporter room. Everybody regroup here. We're not going out yet. Everybody regroup, regroup, regroup. Okay, everyone here, we are moving out in 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, go, go, go. Max is on the front, Max is on the front, Medic's behind. Max is on front, Medic's behind. There we go, keep going, keep going. Now, guys, stop here for a second. Everyone stop here, because this is the key thing that you guys need to keep an eye out for as well. A max crash is very easy to see, guys. Don't worry about the guy on the point, it's fine. We're going to kill him here in a second. Uh, but one thing that is a big dis disadvantage for the Maxis is that if the enemy sees you, they will throw an orbital strike at your head. Uh, and the orbital strike will kill all Maxis no matter if you are in cover or not. So when you are doing a Max Crash, you either need to be very fast with your Max Crash to avoid detection and hit the enemies before they can throw an orbital strike on you, or you can use a buffer, a buffer structure for you to revive your maxes if you get orbital striked. So if they drop the orbital strike on us right now as we're getting out of the teleporter room, we will just ask for the platoon to stay here, stay here, and then we're going to revive all the maxes here before we crash. So keep that in mind, guys. If you are the platoon leader and you are asking for a max crash, an orbital strike is a very very strong possibility for you guys so you regroup get all your maxes up and then you crash again let's go everybody move 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 all the maxes are up maxes on the front on the point go 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 all maxes to the point medics stay behind medics behind medics behind go 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 up the stairs up the stairs then you crash the point and the idea once again is to overwhelm your opponent with the meat shields the maxes have enough life points to to take the punishment from the entrenched position 
you can combine the max crash once again with the uh, with the grenades if you want so if you are playing in the platoon and you are about to do a max crash you can try to use the grenades if you want watch out for c4 use them. yeah but be careful about those guys now second problem with a max crash everyone is that you cannot revive maxes using resonates so when when you are max crashing if all your maxes die you guys will not be able to revive them in mass and resume the breach so this is a, a strategy guys that is not useful for all cases uh, it's very specific and you guys are only going to be using it under very specific circumstances especially if you guys have a very cohesive platoon with good squad leaders and you guys are facing a very well entrenched position you guys are probably going to be going against uh, a very high skilled group so if you guys ever come across a cohesive group that are doing a, an entrenched position what you can do with your max crash is you can hit them from two different points so basically if you split your max crash you're going to be avoiding your max crash to die from a single c4 brick because if the enemy sees a max crash coming their way they're going to be yelling for everyone to get this, their c4s out and a single c4 can crash and it can destroy an entire max push and you can avoid that by splitting your max into two different groups uh, but that is for very specific situation guys it's only ever viable if you have two good lanes of approach and uh you think the entrenchment position is uh, too much of a, sho a choke point for the max crush to work. But most of the times, a well-coordinated max crush will do its job very well. Uh, you guys should be able to break through any kind of entrenched position with a well-positioned max crush. Uh, well, everyone, we're going to be coming back to the spawn room here. Uh, that's gonna cover for those two bases those are the basics for the max crash and the standard breach once again guys a key reminder is cohesion you as the platoon leader you are dealing with new players you are dealing with casual players you should always repeat your orders say them more than once you know make sure your platoon understand what you're talking about you should talk as much as possible to make sure you are giving them as many details as you can for the tactic that you guys are about to implement right now before we move over uh, to the second topic of tonight that's the hold uh, do you guys have any questions about uh, breaches max crashes or standard breaches anyone any questions yes I believe you mentioned something about uh, grenades during a max crash was that in reference to the repair grenades no that's about the cc grenades right so let's say your platoon has asked for a max crash right and i myself am a very proactive player i like to play the objective and i like to help with the objective play as much as i can so i run light assault and i run and i run smoke grenades on my loadouts so if we are asking for a max crash and you want to help you you are confident in your own skills to help in a max crash you can be the one to throw a, a preemptive concuss concussion grenade before the max crash hits or you can be the infiltrator to throw an EMP grenade before the max crash hit that's that's for you guys as players not as platoon leaders if you guys are being a part of a breach you can help by trying to throw a CC grenade on the enemy that's a concussion a smoke grenade, uh, a EMP grenade, but you guys need to make sure you are going to hit it. Because if you hit your platoon with that grenade instead, you're going to do a lot more damage to you guys, uh, you know, than any of the enemies could. Because a friendly grenade in the middle of us is going to hit far, far worse than any of the enemy grenades, right? So this is overall just a call for you guys to be proactive you know know like how to act during a crash during a breach and know that you can do a big difference by throwing an EMP nade or a smoke nade so it's nice for you guys to know about those things go ahead ask again 
Um, for Maxis, do you recommend kinetic or ordnance armor? Always ordnance armor. Uh, for all of your Maxis loadout, the ordnance armor is always a preferable choice uh, because small arms fire is usually not going to be enough to take you out on a max suit, uh, but a C4 brick will. Like if you get hit by C4, you will die without ordnance armor, and that's going to help you to, you know, give you a, a better survival survivable option for those situations because the c4 is the nightmare of the max that's just how it is any more questions guys come on let's keep them coming sapient go ahead no no i didn't have a question it all seems perfectly clear um, at least in concept another max question uh, what kind of loadouts do you recommend for max crashes or just max loadouts yeah, in as a general rule of thumb, uh, for a max crash in general, the best guns that you can run specifically for a max crash, and again, this is specifically for a max crash, are double nebulas. Uh, because when you are doing a max crash, you are basically throwing yourself into a very CQC situation. You are breaching into a room full of people, and they're going to be all around you. So the nebulas are the best CQC weapons that you have for your max uh, on those circumstances. Uh, but you could uh, you could run any of the anti-infantry guns and you should be fine. You you can even run the the AV guns like double comets if you want uh, to take out enemy turrets or maybe even enemy maxes. So. My recommendation would be double nebulas, specifically for max crashes, guys. Uh, they're not the best guns for a max uh, under all circumstances, but for a max crash, the double nebula is the best one. If you're starved for certs, I'd recommend base quasar plus any other anti-infantry gun, preferably a nebula, yep. I guess. I personally need a Quasar and a Blue Shift, but that's just because I like popping heads, so... Do you have spare batteries? True, yeah. true. Do you have any, batteries? any more questions, guys, about the Breach? Uh, any of the squad leads here, any of the platoon leads here, uh, do you guys have any more specific questions about a Breach? No more questions? Sounds good. Okay, everyone, we're going to be moving over to the second topic of tonight here, and the second topic will be point hold. Now, for the second topic, guys, we are actually going to be redeploying away. I'm going to be taking you guys back to the warp gate. So, everyone, hit your U keys. Uh, guys, once again, this platoon is not going to be focusing on fighting in here. So let's fall back to the warp gate, everyone, and uh, I'm going to be meeting you guys on the opposite side of the warp gate. There are a few facilities here that I would like to show you guys, so we're going to be starting with platoon waypoint. Let's go first to platoon waypoint here. You guys should see it on your south, southwest. We're going to be using this one first. Now, guys, uh, for the second topic of tonight, we're going to be covering point holds. As you guys have already seen, the objective play around Planet Side 2 is all about the capture points. And the capture points are usually located inside standardized buildings that are spread around all the continents. So Planet Side has a limited selection of buildings. And most of the points will be inside of these, of these buildings. So as long as you guys know how to play inside of these specific buildings, you will have a better idea on how to defend them as well. So to start off, we're going to check out this one. This one is the best standardized one. It's a very defensible building. And this one is the power building. So if you guys see anyone calling a power building or... Uh, any other names that you guys come to mind now? Powerhouse. The old school people that, yeah, Powerhouse. There are a few other names, but in general, it should... Stack. No, this one is the Power Building or the Powerhouse. So if you guys ever hear uh, 
if you guys any ever hear power building or powerhouse this is the standardized building for this one uh, now we're gonna be going over how to defend this one but the general concept that we're gonna be using to defend this building can be applied to any of the other ones now let's go outside and deal with platoon loadouts uh, right now so guys for defense if you are putting your platoon in an entrenched position your key classes will be both the engineers and the medics so you should be calling your platoon to bring in their engineers and their medics more specifically you will be using a lot of deployables in this in these situations right so every time you are calling for an entrenched position you should ask your platoon to bring uh, baby gates you should ask your platoon to bring anti-infantry turrets and for those of you that don't know the baby gate is the hard light barrier so an engineer can carry up to two hard light barriers and they are extremely important for point holds and point defense yeah this right here is a hard light barrier we usually call it a baby gate during live play so if you guys start hearing people calling for baby gates this is it so pick your classes here guys be it a medic be it uh, an engineer with as many deployables as you guys can fit another good point hold item that you guys can bring is the ordinance dumpener in the tactical slot so I'd recommend you guys to run your engineer and your medic with an ordinance dumpener on the tactical slot uh, and another useful thing that you guys can bring to a point hold are a few infiltrators once again for those motion detection darts or you guys as an option can run the uh, you guys can run the dart gun so basically the crossbow on your engineer as a secondary so if you guys are running the dart gun or on your engineer or your medic assault you can use the motion detection darts on it and you can resupply yourself so that that means you will not be needing the uh, that means you will not be needing the infiltrators on the platoon so best class guys best class loadout engineer with a hunter uh, basically the crossbow with motion detection darts either an infantry turret or the baby gate uh, and a reserve hard light barrier in the utility slot plus the ordnance dumpener on the tactical slot now we got our classes guys let's get inside everyone let's get inside you all got your loadouts now guys this is going to be uh, for you as a platoon leader for you guys as a player you will guys will deal with very different situations for each base and point but usually speaking you will find the, the A point being here on the upstairs in this large room right here and this room is called the double doors room so if you guys look here we have a double doors in this side so this is usually on the live plate called dubs so this is dubs if you are in a platoon and you hear them calling a max crash on dubs you guys now know that this is the double doors this is where you guys should be defending and as a platoon leader as soon as you make it to the point you should call for the entrenchment so you go ahead and say everyone lock the point down I want to see deployables everywhere let's lock all the rooms all the stairs engineering turrets baby gates up everyone let's lock down the point I want to see all the doors being covered I want to see all the stairs being covered baby gates on the routers if you guys have them let's lock the point down now this is where you guys will come with your classes and you will put down baby gates on all doors you will make sure everything is covered you will put your engineering turrets if you have them covering the the doors out there and for everyone that's on the platoon if you guys are going to be playing on the platoon itself try to avoid putting this specific one right here guys it was good as an example here but you guys see this uh, this baby gate that stays between the corridor out here on the stairs and the double doors this one is not one that we want to have here because this one is damaging to our own mobility so we should try to not use this one if you guys see it being put up try to avoid it make sure you have all the other ones covered 
So this is it. You have your point covered. Now you guys are holding inside. Infiltrators should be told to keep spamming the motion detection darts for them to for you to see all around. Uh, yeah, someone is asking about the best place for smoke. Uh, if you are playing defense, guys, and this is general, like it doesn't matter what base you are playing at. If you are playing defense, if your platoon is defending, you will never use smoke. Never. I never want to see an SKL platoon throwing smoke on a defense because the smoke is an offensive tool. If you throw smoke out there at the doors, you're going to be helping your enemies more than you're going to be helping us. So never use smoke when defending as a general rule. Uh, make sure you use smoke only for attack. Uh, now guys, how a hold is going to work? You guys are here, you guys have set up, you are waiting for your enemies. If they have any few brain cells they will be trying to attempt to breach that you guys just saw how it's done so they will be regrouping somewhere they will either be doing a max crash or they will be doing a standard breach for either of those you guys should be as i said spamming motion detection for you guys to see where they're coming from and then you guys as the platoon leader will be responsible for calling out those breaches as soon as you guys see them on the map as a platoon member, like not the platoon leader, that's one of the most important callouts that you can do, is to let your platoon leader and your entire platoon know where the breach is going to be coming from, where the enemy are coming from. That's the key factor during a hold. Now, you guys have already seen where the double doors is, so if I call dubs, you guys know where it is here in this facility. Now, on the opposite side, guys, this big big stairway that we have here the central stairs everyone come here this is usually called fat stairs so these big stairs are called fat stairs and you can also use fat stairs one fat stairs two and fat stairs three for the three doors that we have downstairs that's more specific but you can use that if you want uh, those are from the left to the right. So one, two, three, starting from left to right downstairs. So fat stairs one, fat stairs two, fat stairs three is the call out that you guys are going to be using here. And the last one, guys, that's the opposite side. This small one here with a single doorway heading inside. This is called the skinny stairs. So if you ever hear anyone yelling that is a breach incoming through skinny, you guys know that skinny is here so you have skinny fat and dubs skinny fat dubs those are the three call outs for this specific building now for you as a platoon leader it is your responsibility to let your platoon know about these call outs so when you are first setting up when you are setting up entrenchment you as the platoon leader will do the same thing I just did here with you guys you will get your platoon around in a much more, you know, in a much faster way, a, a much simpler way. But you will take your platoon and you will run them around. Hey guys, come with me, follow the platoon leader. This right here is double doors, this right here is double doors. Everyone, if I call double doors, you guys come here. Everyone, this right here is fat stairs. If I call fat stairs, you guys come here. And everyone, this last one here is skinny stairs. So if I call skinny stairs, you guys come here. It's your responsibility as the platoon leader to give the new players that information. Uh, usually, SKL platoons have a large amount of new players on them. So you shouldn't expect them to know this out of the gate. You will need to teach them. Now you know the callouts. Uh, you should be using those inside of this building if you have them. Now you guys know how to defend this one. Everyone, we have a max crash incoming dubs. Everyone, max crash incoming dubs. Double doors, max crash incoming. Max crash incoming. There you go. That's how you see. Breach, breach skinny. They're breaching skinny, breaching skinny. Everyone, breach skinny. There you go. That's how you do it. Now fat stairs three, fat stairs three. Everyone, we have beach, breach fat stairs door three. Yep, that's how you do it. Everyone, you got 
you got the gist of this one probably most of you guys have already been a part of a hold in one of these buildings right here but these are not the only ones you guys are going to be finding out there there are several other different kinds of, of buildings this one outside here guys this smaller one you can all leave now this smaller one is usually just called a square building or a box building it doesn't have a, a a very good name to it and you can find it in a few bases now for this specific one there there isn't a lot of tactic to holding one of these uh, you just plug all the doors so basically you get one baby gate for each door in there you make sure all the doors are plugged with the baby gates and you try your best to hold inside uh, and when you are dealing with these kinds of buildings, you are not going to have the standardized callouts for all the doors, right? This one, you can't give a different name to each one of the doors. So as a platoon leader, you should try to use your compass. You have a directional compass just on top of your minimap, guys. And that's what you should use to let your platoon know where the enemy is coming from. And keep in mind, as a platoon leader of an SKL platoon, you should tell your platoon that. So basically, when you are entrenched here, you are going to go, Okay, platoon, we are going to be calling breaches using the compass on top of your minimap. So keep your eyes on the directions. We are going to be calling north, south, batteries. east, and Someone west. So in these kinds of situations, that's the best way for you to let your platoon know where the breach is going to be coming from. So we've, we've used this one as an example. This is a square building or a box building. This one right here, right next to it, is an L-shaped building. So this is an L building. You can find these ones in several building, in several bases as well. A good example uh, that you guys definitely know is the A-point in uh, the A-point building on Crossroads Watchtower. So Crossroads Crossroads Watchtower has the tower right here. So where I'm shooting is the tower. You get in here and the A point is right here on the center. So you have these kinds of bases, the L-shaped base uh, in several places. Same thing for this one. You try your best to stick to the walls. Make sure you are telling your platoon to stay close to the walls and away from the doors. So everyone stay close to the door to the walls, hug the walls and stay away from the doors, stay away from the doors, hug the walls. That's the best way for you to hold these ones. Now the other ones that we have here, uh, let's go now to platoon waypoint. So platoon waypoint is gonna be the next big one. We have the the next big standardized one on platoon waypoint is all the way on the opposite side. So let's go check that one out. Now this one here guys is called a triple stack. This is a triple stack standard building. You can also find these ones in several places across the map. The point room will usually be upstairs. So you will usually have a point upstairs. And this is also a larger one that has some kind of standardization. Uh, so here's how you identify stuff in here guys. This building has a balcony on the second floor. So if all of you come out here, you can see that we have a balcony in here on the second floor. Now, it is basically a base that's mirrored. So you have two sides that are exactly the same. The only difference is the balcony. So the balcony side, the side with the balcony door, is the open side. So where you have the balcony, you have the open stairs. So open stairs is the stairs on the side of the balcony. So if you call open stairs, it's this one where you have the balcony open. And the other one is closed stairs. So if you are defending this standard triple stack building, those are the only two callouts that you have standardized for this one. Closed stairs and open stairs. So same thing for this one, guys. Uh, if you are defending here, as soon as you get in, you call for baby gates on all doors, you call for engineering turrets, make sure you guys are putting all of your deployables up, ordnance dumpers, baby gates, anti-infantry turrets, make sure everyone is set and ready. 
now guys the only building that is still missing here that is still a standardized building is the double stack uh we're gonna go ahead and try to find one in the map here uh after we're done with the warp gate but before we go ahead and try to find a double stack i'm just gonna teach you guys a little bit more about how to coordinate your platoon's resources so if you guys are defending and the situation is getting critical the enemy is overpopping you you are locked down on the point uh, one of the key things that you should try to do on your platoon is to control a platoon's use of resources so if you don't have access to a router and even if you do your platoon's resources will be limited by that I mean you have a limited amount of revive grenades, you have a limited amount of C4, you have a limited amount of normal grenades. So if the situation is getting critical, you see that the enemy is starting to push you with a lot of pressure, you should tell your platoon to save the resources. Guys, make sure you save the resources for when we need them. Medics keep reviving the people with the medic tool, keep the resonates for when they breach. Keep the C4s for when they do a max crash. And you guys in general as a player should have that in mind as well. If you see one single infiltrator running upstairs, do not throw a C4 brick at it. Just throw, just kill it with a normal gun. You should guys try to save your C4 for the max crash. And the medics should have the resonates for the final seconds of the cap. So if that situation do arrive, that's where you guys start calling it so as a platoon leader same thing again you keep your eyes on the map you identify the enemy coming guys we're having a max crash on open stairs we're having a max crash on open stairs c4 is out c4 is out everyone and that's where you call your platoon to get the c4s on the ready and use those resources when the time comes right now the second part of that resource management is the revive grenade and the revive grenade is going to be related to the point collapse that is going to be coming uh, in case your point starts to get into trouble so two situations are going to call for a point collapse and those will be you are getting dislodged so the enemy is breaching and you are having you are under a lot of pressure the enemy is about to touch the a point and the second one will be in the 30 seconds left of the base cap. Under those two circumstances, you will call your entire platoon to fall back to the point timer. So you will go ahead and say, everyone, 30 seconds left, collapse the point, collapse the point. Everybody back to the A point room, keep the timer on your screen. And what you want to do by that is make sure you have enough bodies on the point enough people around the point timer that if the enemy do eventually breach it's going to be a matter of how many people you have around the point against how many they have if you guys don't know uh, the way the points work is you will keep holding the point your faction will maintain control of the point as long as you have more people around it than the enemy so the enemy can throw a lot of bodies on the point as long as you have more than they do you will maintain point control so under desperate circumstances you call everyone back to the point just to make sure they're not jumping on it in, in the last second and stealing it away from you guys and that's where you use the revive grenades you call for the revive grenades make sure you keep the zombies coming and your medic's priority at that point should be just to throw more and more resonates at that point. As many as you can get. Right? I can repair that. So now, everyone, we are done with this part. I'm going to be redeploying you guys away from here because we're going to be checking a few other bases that I want to cover. Uh, but before we move out, do any of you guys have any questions about the point holds, the overall yep. hold strategy? Go ahead, Mitter. Uh, can you touch on where they should put hard light canopies in triple stacks? Because I'm sick of people putting yeah. and beacons as well. They use the roof, yeah, and that's not cool. That is a great call, Hitter. Uh, in this specific base here, guys, with this specific base layout, you guys can rely on the beacon as a, a very useful source of of uh, 
of logistics by just placing uh, an air canopy on the stairs to the roof. So as a general rule, you guys shouldn't be yourselves up here because this is a very exposed area, but you guys can use the stairs. So what, what we're saying here is you use your tactical slot. So on the tactical slot, you can buy with Merrick the hard light canopy. And if you place one of these up here, it basically covers the entire opening upstairs and you can place beacons under that hard light canopy. You use them uh, as line. logistics for your platoon. This is what Hitter is talking over there. And it is very, very useful in this specific base. So if, you, if we call for beacons up here, you just go up to the stairs and place it down right here. Because right here, it already has an opening to the sky. So that's how you go about it. Another thing, uh, as you touched on all these dampeners, can you go about where they should put them? Because yep. a lot of them yep. go on the ground and that's, that defeats the purpose of an you, ordinance dampener after two minutes. You can minutes. go ahead too, Mitter. Feel free. Like, uh, Mitter makes a very good point there, guys that the if you guys are running the ordinance dumpeners the ordinance dumpeners they have an area around them that extends like in a radius that means you don't need to put them on the ground for them to be uh useful and as a as a rule as well if you end up putting them on the ground they're uh they're under a higher chance of being destroyed by grenades so if you guys are putting down ordinance dumpeners you can put them up anywhere on the facility that means you can put them up on top of boxes on top of terminals so every time you guys are trying to put down an orb or an ordinance dumpener try to place it on top of another object to prevent them from being destroyed by ground hitting grenades so that is so another note as well, short start don't don't put them on the ground if you're an engineer you can use your hard light barrier to just jump on it and you can still use it if you have a taller box or a locker if you have an, uh, a turret, you can still jump on your turret and use the ordinance dumper to put it on the locker. So, ordinance dumper is on the ground, defeats the purpose of a dumpner. Yeah, sometimes you have the very high up uh, boxes here, the, the ones that can barely fit anyone on top of there. You can use another deployable to boost yourself up and put it up there. So, that's the best spot you can possibly have for an ordinance dumpner. I got one other yeah. note, Orby. Yeah, go ahead. Uh, it has to do to, with uh, router placement and like emergency replacing a router. If you're running a point hold like NG or something <clears throat> and you're throwing shit down everywhere, uh, and also the infantry themselves, keep in mind like if, if a OS comes down and a router gets destroyed or somebody comes in and, and blows it with C4 or something and we got another pocket router, if you're standing in the little corner cubby area, we can't put the fucking router down because your body's in the way. The same thing goes for ammo packs uh, and other different deployables. So try to be conscious of, of where you're throwing stuff. And if you do see an ally coming in and like knifing or shooting your ammo box or something, just be aware. Most likely they're trying to put down you know, so some type of router or defensive like hard light barrier or something to protect it before they drop it. And... Most of these up. areas, you know, the router placement, it's, it's never going to be like right in front of a fucking window or in front of a door. So, uh, just keep that in mind, like if you're hiding out in the cubby over here, like in the corner where uh, uh, rubber bones is, etc. Um, you're blocking someone's ability to, to, to put that there. You actually can't put it directly in this corner right here. Uh, anyway, there's not enough space, but you can put it like, you know, right outside of it. Very good point there. Uh, we were not going to be covering routers specifically in here because uh, I believe we have another dedicated router training and I didn't want this one to be very extensive. But that is a very good point, guys. Keep, uh, keep your eyes on the router and try to, you know, have that in mind. If you guys see a router placement position, like if you see the place where the router should go, do not just stand in there, okay? That's where the, sh the router should be, and people will try to team kill you to get you out of there. So make sure you guys are not blocking any places where we need to put down the deployables. That is a good heads up. Anyone, any other questions relating to hold? Yes, you can rely on me to have to waste your absolute time. Uh, regarding the triple stack, because there are so many triple stacks around Roxas. 
most of the time the enemy, if they try to bridge, they might drop or they might try to take the first floor and I'll leave it to Robert to explain how you defend or use this under drops or first floor holes before you start pushing. Yeah, in, in general guys, for the drops there's not, for the drops there isn't a very like concise way for you to respond to them just it's just more of a surprise thing right a drop is not as effective as a breach in any way shape or form a breach is a much more cohesive punch through a drop is usually going to be much more of a trickle in kind of effect and it is only very effective it ca if it catches you off guard like if you don't see a drop coming in that's where it really does a lot of damage so in case for the platoon leaders, and I've mentioned this before, uh, the thing you guys should be doing during a hold is just keeping an eye out. You don't need to shoot anyone. You are the brain of the operation when you are in one of these situations. So if you see a drop coming, your priority is to let your platoon know, hey guys, focus on the stairs to the roof. They're going to be dropping on top of us. Everybody focus the stairs on the roof. They're dropping right now. They're dropping right now. And if you guys see Maxis, if they're dropping Maxis with the drop, then you let them know, hey guys, Max drop on the roof. C4's on the ready. Max drop on the roof. C4's on the ready. And then your platoon should know where to look and they should know where to respond. And that's your job as the platoon leader. It's just to tell your platoon where to respond, how to respond to that, and in the case of the SKL platoons, and I can't, I just can't say this enough, guys, for all of you out there that are going to be leading SKL platoon, it is also your job to teach the players how to respond. They will not know how to respond it themselves. They are new players, they're casual players. So while you are setting all of this up, it's your job to tell them how to react to each and every one of these situations. Tell them, hey guys, if they drop on top of us, they're going to be coming through these roof stairs. Guys, if, if they are coming through here, this is open doors. This is the open stairway because it's on the side of the balcony. If I call balcony, guys, if they're breaching through the balcony, here's where it's at. Here it is. The platoon leader is jumping. Look at me. And all that stuff. It's your job as the PL to teach your platoon how to do that, right? Any more questions, guys, about this topic? I think I got one. Go uh, ahead. Is, it, yeah. is it true that even if you're dead, you're contesting the point? Yes. Uh, if you keep the bodies, even the dead bodies counts yeah, towards the, the cap timer. So if you keep an entire platoon on the point and you are all dead, you are still helping on the timer. I think the cutoff time is the time it takes to revive. So once the cooldown for that's Revives. 30 seconds. No, it's basically yeah. 15. If in the last 15 seconds you're on point, they can never take it, whatever happens. Yeah. So, uh, when you guys have that timer, you know, on your screen when you die, for you to get revived, if that timer runs out, it stops counting. But as long as that timer is still going, you, you are still counting towards the cap, so... Keep that in mind as well. Even if you die on point, you are still you are still contributing, guys. 